The Royal Game by Stefan Zweig. Zweig. C W E I G. I'm not sure if it's Zweig or Zweig. Um, probably not. Neither of those, honestly. Um, he is an Aust was an Austrian uh, author, poet. Um, born in the uh, 1880s, I believe, 1881 to um, 1942, um, I believe. He and his wife actually tragically committed suicide on the right about on his 60th, not long after his 60th birthday, I think. Um, and it was there's a, for very understandable, but obviously I'm not trying to say that's it was a good way of you know and any decision or I'm not trying to really make a value judgment about like you know that he shouldn't have or he should have or whatever. Um, but it was definitely didn't partially definitely to do with the Second World War. It was definitely to do with the fall of Europe, and he wrote this other um, great work that I've, I've yet to actually read, but I have it coming in the mail, <laughs> by um, Zweig that he called The World of Yesterday, which is kind of a memoir, oh, him, his opinions, you know, kind of just like, um, I did listen to one kind of redux review on it that, I um, can't remember the name of the YouTuber, but he said um, Zweig was very, like, um, like angst, like he was very upset by the way Europe turned out, like how after all this time of being one of the greatest, like smart, like most intelligent, most artistic, um, inv inventive, creative, um, and efficient, not to mention, um, countries like Austria, German, you know, uh, Hungary, you know, uh, France, like all, pretty much all of them, I think he was like kind of saying, uh, like in a, in a way kind of complicitly allow themselves to be uh, not taken advantage or taken over but like some of them would be either by um, were under you know definitely the Germans and the Austrians kind of in particular so I think he had maybe a right to talk about that but it was um, they all fell under the spell of uh, German Nazism and this kind of um, which plays a part oddly enough in the book <laughs> uh, in the world game um, but he he was so sickened by this and so like deeply depressed that he ended up um i think it was after he actually ran off in exile with his wife um to rio de janeiro um and they i think they took barbiturates i think they were i think uh i'm not sure the exact details of how or exactly why if it was just like the maybe the state of the city or if maybe he's just used to kind of you know his home and then maybe seeing that you know, often um, in Austria, you know, just completely bombed, you know, to smithereens, like, it's like, that ha has effect on you, so, yeah, he uh, ended up, I think, taking barbiturates, and um, not long after arriving there, so that was, you know, and the pictures are very sad, too, um, uh, like, very, like, a, you know, like, you as a, you know, you could see that there was, like, you know, like, a lot of, you know, pain in, like, you know, the way, you know, like, he didn't want to, you know, like, he never imagined that, you know, this would happen to Europe or, like, you know, something that's as intensely worldwide and, you know, like, completely, you know, form it, forming, you know, formative everywhere, pretty much, or the world around just kind of shook. Um, but the world game is actually, um, it starts with kind of a pretty interesting kind of thing with a unnamed narrator who talks about his, um, kind of exile, not, his, um, adventures in trying to find, uh, or at least catalog these, all these different chess players that he knows of. And one of them is this, um, I believe a Brazilian or South American guy that is super good at chess because he's actually a farm boy and he starts off saying that um, this um, kind of funny kind of anecdote about how this this once this kid that was so um, uneducated you know so of little means that he all of a sudden because he once he took on this thing of chess you know he just like completely stuck to it and clung to it and ended up just learning it really good and becoming a natural and um, He's uh, was supposed to play against this other person who's really also really good as well um, from I believe Scotland whose name is uh, McConnor I think and there's a part where he's in the boat or he's going to Scotland and he's trying to you know there's pretty funny parts like 
um, the narrator is like kind of like watching and he's like I'm so like fascinated by these chess players like they they don't have like um, there's one thing like it becomes a monomania like this thing like it's just chess like it's just that and they and they kind of let it enroach them and it takes up their whole entire life and he was wondering like the only way like how could anybody learn that and um, it does have an unreliable kind of fractured narrative in the sense that you don't really think much of the narrator maybe at first because he's um, he seems to be like an observer, kind of just like slow, you know, watching things pass him by. But um, and then and then there's like, you know, especially with like the way that some of the chess players treat each other. Like the, there's like one person who's like a um, they organize this uh, tournament, and there's the you know the McConnor, and then the one Brazilian guy, I believe, and the Brazilian I think one of them, or the chess man, grandmasters, like turns out to be like a, kind of a um, a really disagreeable, just like, um, rude and it's just taciturn fellow who's just like writes him off and he's like, no, 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 I don't care. Like, he doesn't really, so much as like, you know, have, you know, the common decency to introduce himself and, you know, he just kind of like, I think he gets up in the middle of it and just leaves and it's kind of like, you know, this, this lack of manners is just very surprising to the narrator. Um, so about partial way through, we hear that he, the narrator divulges that he himself actually, um, was in, uh, while well, in Austria was, uh, taken under, you know, under, uh, arrest by the Gestapo, um, during the fall of Europe, probably like late thirties, I suppose. And they put him in solitary confinement, but the thing is they, um, don't actually do anything like, the, the, the interesting aspect of this is they don't actually deprive him of food, they don't force him to work out in a concentration camp. He's actually, he is in, I think, in a kind of a concentration camp, but he's actually not in the kind of working camps, like the work will set you free kind of um, variation of like the Aus like Auschwitz or Buchenwald. Um, he's actually, oops, I found, <laughs> he's actually in a kind of nondescript, but you know, sp space is enough for him. But he's, the thing that makes him craziest is that there's no variation in his day. They um, to toy with him. Uh, they lo like the lock his room. They play mind games with him, and the, the guards won't call him for hours and hours. And then out of the blue, they're just like they'll uh, you know after hours of him like waiting in anticipation for something, you know anything, you know to help to cling on to. They'll like be like, well, we need to interview for you for something, and he'll like you know. It's it's mostly on the count like it's kind of left in the dark a little bit like on the grounds they arrest him but I think it has something to do with he has sensitive or some kind of sensitive information that might help the Nazis and uh, but he, this the narrator is not letting up any of it like he was like um, but there were parts where he felt like cracking like he was like I'll tell you I, I, there was parts where I felt like just telling them anything even if I didn't know anything um, just a shred of information but. Uh, to get, to keep his sanity, because the biggest thing was that not being able to have anything, no reading material, no sh like he's given a dish throughout the do throughout kind of the door. One guard sees him. There's no windows. It's not even like one tiny little crappy window. There's nothing. Um, so he's forced to kind of just sit. And then he there were certain things where he'd like memorize the same stuff over and over again, like a shred, of, even just a shred of reading material, just anything. And then he ended up kind of reinforcing his memory. He'd be like, okay, well, I'll, I'll memorize the na national anthem over and over again. And he does that, and he gets sick and tired of it. Um, so for almost a year, they keep him like this, kind of this in anticipation, this or that. And then suddenly he finds out that um, they, I think it, they change his room or something, or maybe in the interview, like in the interview room, he's when he's taken out of confinement, he suddenly falls upon this coat, and he's like, oh, that's strange, there's something in the coat, maybe there's something in there, like, what's that? And then he sees, like, a, kind of the edge of the, of the uh, pocket, he sees just barely this book, and then he's like, oh, well, any kind of reading material, I, I haven't read anything, like, it would be, what is it, Goethe, is it, um, you know, is it, um, Homer, like, something in the poetry of whatever? <laughs> and he just grabs at it, and he's like, quickly, but he's like, has to be pretty quick about it, um, so he doesn't, like, look at it, so he ends up, you know, smuggling in his, like, po pocket, <laughs> And then he, um, yeah, he, like, goes back to his room. He's, like, able to make it back kind of, you know, in one piece without, you know, the Gestapo 
realizing what he's done, and he is, or if they even care that much, but, um, yeah, he's, looks at it, and then he finds out, he's like, oh, it's not anything, it's just a chess book, it's just a, a, uh, textbook, it's, it's like a handbook on the rules of chess, that's probably, like, maybe, not too thick, but, like, enough that he's, like, has, it has, like, kind of all the rules and everything for chess, and then he just goes, like, he's, like, at first, he's, like, you know, damn it, like, he was ready to, um, he admits that he was ready to kind of just throw it out of the room, and, like, not even ever see it again, but then he was, like, he, uh, restrains himself, and he thinks about it, and he's, like, you know what, I could actually kind of use this, maybe, maybe I can teach myself the game, keep myself entertained, so he does this, he teaches himself the game, uh, step by step, then he memorizes all these kind of places and things and, uh, algorithms and little systems and, like, C, C1, C2, C4, and A4, this and that, the whole entire chessboard he's able to memorize. And then this is where it gets kind of, like, impressionistic, kind of really, like, crazy and wild as, uh, he starts talking about, like, how well he becomes at chess to the point he starts, he's like, well, I've tried every, I've exhausted every thing in this book. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing at this point it's probably months and months more on top of that year that he almost already spent, so, um, so he keeps, like, you know, keeps at it until basically there's nothing left in, for him to like, glean from it, and he's like, wait, I could play chess with myself, and then he, that's what he does, he plays chess with himself. <laughs> it's very, it's funny, but it's also maddening in a way, because he's, like, he goes, like, deep into kind of, like, this, or the psychology of, like, how insane, um, this, you know, it's something that, it's weird because it's like, the discipline of it kind of keeps him sane, right? Like, the idea of, um, how well can you move, like, you know, that you're getting, you know, a king, and he's in this, oh, well, that's the thing, he actually, he plays chess with himself, but with bits of food, <laughs> this is funny, he, with bits and scraps of food, like, he makes this little ersatz kind of hodgepodge, um, chess board, and with chess pieces, and he's like, I he, like, he admits he feels so stupid for making, like, the king out of these little, like, potatoes or something, like, it's, um, but he ends up, like, you know what, getting so good at it that he memorizes it and contains it in his head forever, um, run free, so, yeah, he's just, like, like, talks about, like, just, like, every, like, dark moment of himself that he's, like, you know, like, think, feeling crazy that he, f every, that he's somehow turned every leaf, that there's nothing else to contribute to the game of chess, like, what then, what else could he possibly talk about? So he goes on and on and on, and then finally, um, I mean, this is only, like, a, like, an afternoon read, or maybe two-day read, maybe, weekend read, uh, it's only three hours about to go through, um, and it's written in a way, such a way that it's not overly psychological, but it, it, it's, I mean, it's, it might be a little bit too much, maybe, to handle, like, when it gets to the part where he's, like, getting really manic, but... I don't know, I thought it was really interesting, very unique, um, a little bit kind of, some people, um, I've heard, took the, weren't, uh, were a little bit incredulous, like, uh, had a harder time believing that the Nazis would just let him, um, do certain things, or get away, you know, like, or, like, the Nazis would capture him in the first place, but, um, and that's the thing, part of the thing, too, like, if he, like, he felt that, at least with the, the camp workers, like, the people who had to, like, you know, march in a line or eat, like, even with them or, you know, digging a hole with that, those kind of seemingly, um, desultory tasks, at least they could do something, they had something, but, you know, he didn't have anything, so, like, this idea of, kind of, chess, and then it becomes this monomania, thus the theme of the novel, and it's kind of, like, um, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Um... So by the end of the novel, it's, um, spoilers, um, he ends up going to a point having a, a kind of a fit of angst near the end where he's like, trying, he's like, you know, thought of pretty much everything, and he's like, he's grasping at straws trying to figure out, like, what else to do, and he's like, what else can I do, like, there's no, I've done every formula, I've done everything, like, see this, see that, you know, I've exhausted the whole chessboard, like, what can I do, and he's like, finally, he just kind of, like, peels over, and he kind of, like, um, has a fit of, uh, anxiety, I think, like a nervous attack, like a breakdown, um, and he wakes up in a doctor's office, um, to a polite nurse, and it's not in Germany anymore, I'm guessing this is probably, um, kind of like, just like, maybe this is a bit of the critiques, like, people had, um, it being, like, kind of, like, not entirely believable the way he wakes up, like, in safety now, but I think, like, the thing is, um, 
there's, for some reason, the, the Nazis don't have any reason for him anymore. They're just kind of like, give him back to the other side, or they give him, they let him free. Um, or maybe by the time he's, they think he's gone insane that he doesn't really have anything to offer, so, uh, but for whatever, whatever reason, whatever, Deus Ex Machina, um, he's free, and then he's in a chat, you know, he's, he's in a, um, he's like, begging the doctor to ask, like, what happened, and he explains himself, and he's like, oh, you, you were, I thought you, I was like, mistaking you to be a, some kind of like, um, uh, like some kind of doctor or some kind, because you kept on like talking about formulas. I, I thought you were like a mathematician. He's like, no, I was talking about chess formulas, and like the doctor, like the doctor is just like flummoxed, obviously. And then like uh, the narrator goes on to like talk about all his like you know this thing with the, they did with chess and like how he learned it, became such master at it, and then he ends up kind of getting uh, through word of mouth hearing about this other guy. This is where things get hazy on the details. Um, this other guy that's another like grandmaster chess champion who challenges him to a duel. This is kind of the last, you know, the last kind of de the uh, denouement kind of part of the novel where they both like go out and have this uh, thing in the hospital. I think it's within the hospital, so they're like um, I don't know how they're able to get him there, but it's just kind of funny that it's like they end up, you know, um, I think he ends up losing to this guy though, but it's all in like. In good fun, though I'm not sure if it's like, but the, I mean, it does seem like the people, like even the people that are just watching it, are so intense. Like there's so, so yeah. Um, and a personal thing, like I didn't think I would actually get so much out of this. I didn't expect you to take that turn partially through when like he's like, let me tell you my story, but the guess that but how yeah, that, I love that part, but, but um, the whole thing, you know, even. But I was never a big fan of chess. I didn't think expect it to be the you know this taken aback by uh, a book on about. Uh -huh. chess, but turns out the way it was told more so than the kind of the particular details of chess because I actually don't really like chess. I'm, I'm, probably because I was never good at it. I was never really good at strategizing and kind of like seeing all the steps ahead and having the, everything mapped out before before my eyes and like all you know, which knights, you know, like you know, pawns and knights and you know, uh I, I'm, I'm sure, like, maybe if I gave it some time, I might be able to do it. Um, you know, and this these nowadays, it's like, this is why it's such a quintessentially um, kind of modern book, maybe, in the sense that it predates technology, and, you know, there wouldn't have been any app on his anybody's phone that had anything to do with chess, so... Um, this pre, kind of, like, the, the Twitch streamer chess kind of um, celebrity type of thing, but, I you know, it's, it's more with, you know, these great kind of... Um, the, most of the figures were people that maybe lacked in every other era of um, thing in life, aside from chess. And the interesting thing with it is that it's not like he's saying, like, oh, the only way to become good at chess is if you're in, you know, you have these drastic measures, and if you just lock yourself in your room, <laughs> if somebody locks yourself against your will in your room, but it does give you, it's more of a thought experiment, as a way kind of explores the kind of fractured mentality of this guy that's like, oh, I've, you know, I, I've done it all, I've seen it all, I've learned every move, every trick of my sleeve. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, because it also reminds me of Horhas, too. You know, like the Library of Babel, I think, in the sense um, that there's so many different permutations and different things you can... Only so many things, and if you give somebody infinity, like, how many can you... Eventually, what you're going to get is, like, all those different books and all those different things are all going to combine, you know, the classic monkey on typewriters, and, um, you know, it has to create something meaningful out of the chaos, so, yeah, um, The Royal Game, also known as The Great Chess Game, I think is another title for it, by Stefan Zweig, um, I would like to read, I think, the, I can't remember the name of the other one, um, you know, the, the, The World of Yesterday, and, like, some of the, some of his other stuff, other stuff, Definitely, sometimes, yeah. So, thank you for watching.